they really do exist. If you can get your hands on one, let's paint something cool today. This is a Big Mama. It is 10 inches long without the tail, making it an 11 inch bait uh, if you bought it from Hinkle. Uh, it comes in undressed, unhooked at just nine ounces. Kind of need a broomstick to throw it or a really good Leviathan rod. Um, I don't even think the Mike Bucas are rated for higher than eight. I've got it up on helping hands, but that's precarious. And the reason I'm saying that is because it is such a heavy bait. This is nine ounces, undressed, unpainted. Um, one of the things that we're gonna have to remember is to be very careful with it. A kokanee salmon is a very, you would think, simple pattern, but there's a lot of little nuances that go into it. Obviously, we're gonna do some color shift on this today because it's, um, it's something that you're gonna see as it moves across the top of the water if this were a real fish. Now, Hinkle already has a sand and prime that's happened before you ever get the bait if it's unpainted. Uh, it's really cool for us, but you can see my thumb. I've got more primer on me because I put an additional filler and self-etch primer on this, did a little bit more sanding with it, and now we're ready to go. Now, this is going to be a kokanee salmon pattern, and instead of doing white as a base coat, we're going to do black because there is texture in this bait. So we want some definition behind these scales. It's very similar to how Bullshad does uh, their scaling. Uh, sort of, it's not the same. Um, completely different process I think was involved as far as what we use for scales, but you can, it's not the only scaled bait out there, but when you're looking at, for example, our trick shads and our trick gills, we do have some sort of scaling. Now, obviously this, was from uh, a different process. So we're gonna come across and I'm gonna come from behind because you wanna get this black into the scales. So I'm gonna shoot from a direction behind the bait. So that's what we're trying to do here. I'm just gonna get everything nice and dark. I'm also working through, it looks like we're gonna have another yet one more thunderstorm. It, it's, um, it's almost kind of like living, uh, I thought we lived in Georgia, but um, it's kind of turned into the Amazon jungle. It has, we've had severe storms every day this week, I wanna say. and lots of torrential downpours to the point where if you guys are following me on social, you guys know like, I'm an avid gardener, I love gardening, but um, squash is rotting, the cucumbers are saturated, the tomatoes, which really cannot stand a lot of moisture, are doing better than I thought they would be, but obviously I'm not watering anything um, at all. Uh, the rain and Mother Nature and the good Lord has provided an exuberant amount of rain. All right, we're letting this kind of dry off here a little bit. I'm not going to put a, a heat gun to it or any kind of air to let. I'm just going to naturally let it dry. That was thunder. So just to let you guys know, if we have to continue, we might. Um, usually when it storms real bad at the shop, we lose power. So hard to say. But cannot do a spray session if there's no lights and no compressor. The black has dried and that's gonna be a good base coat. I'm gonna be using a little bit of Liquitex acrylic silver. It's an iridescent bright silver. And one of the things that I like about this, if you're not doing a chrome, my customer wanted a very natural pattern and not something that was super shiny. He just wanted something that's gonna 
replicate the fish as best as possible. I like using this stuff because you can shoot it without having to reduce it, and it does give you a very nice shine. Now, I, I pretty much went from the back part of this fish forward so that I could get the depth in here. We're gonna do the same thing from the opposite direction. I'm gonna angle this slightly. We're gonna shoot silver across the top first. And you'll notice that when you have metallics and you have iridescent paint, uh, whenever you have something that is really gonna be shiny, I like to go ahead and use a black base for it because that black base really makes it pop, really brings it out nicely. And we're just gonna angle all the way down so that we can still see some of the black from the other side. And that's how we're gonna portray the depth in this. So I'm just gonna run this all the way back. I'm layering it up fairly thick. I just want to go ahead and get the entire thing. Pressure's right around 35 right now. I am going to get the underside of this just to finish that off. Okay, now that we have our silver on here, I'm gonna spray white on the belly, but not just quite yet. So I'm gonna use a, like a transparent black magenta, which is gonna put a little bit darker of a texture and color all across the back. And for this, we're just gonna shoot straight down. And you want a transparent for this because you want to be able to see that shine underneath. And then just a little bit, not that much. He wants me to kind of keep this silvery and clean. But we're going to use just a little bit on the sides. And then same thing on the other. It's nice and light. Just a little bit. If you were to pretend that this is in like 10 sections, one tenth of the top is pretty much all you need down the sides of this. You really want to leave most of this silver. Just along the very tip of the spine where these fins would go, bring this down from 35 to about 10 and just really lightly place over the in the very middle of this one three strokes of, of a pearl black just to accent a little bit of what's happening in the head of this I'm just gonna grab a quick stencil just kind of fade that out on the face Very gently set this back down. Flip this over. Line up the eyes to where we had it before. Do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of fade that back. Nice and light. Just like that. Something that you won't see me do very often, I'm gonna take a, a clean, fairly clean, dry cloth and just rub this back. And that's gonna kinda depict the differences in scales. This is obviously a little bit older of a fish. Next up, I'm going to put a color down the back, down the spine of this that has no business being in there, but it's gonna be used as a base color and it's going to be this Liquitex iridescent gold. It's a very bright gold. And the reason I'm choosing this over silver is that when I lay the color shift over top of that, the compressor goes off. Standby. So as I was saying, 
when you lay color shift over top of a gold, it seems to do really, really well as far as being able to pick up that color shift. So I'm just gonna lightly lay down some gold here and I'm just gonna move it across the spine. Very light, nothing, nothing crazy. Because we just wanna give the perception of scales. Scales on a kokanee are incredibly small as they are on most salmonoid and trout. Um, so again, we don't really wanna to do too much with this. We just wanna lay this down so we can lay our color shift on. If we lay just color shift on black, it looks cool, but it really just does not pick up the way it should. So this is why we do what we do. It seems a little dyslexic and not right, but it seems to work out really, really well when you're laying color shifts down. And it's also gonna give just a little bit more de definition than we already had in areas where we didn't have it before, like the spine of the bait. So I can model in a little bit darker strips here and there, which will also carry through to the color shift. There we go, starting to lay in this color shift. Just a little bit there, and then we're gonna do some more purple. It's a little bit darker of a purple. Just in the tail. So I've picked this up. We have dried that. It's quite a lovely touch of color shift. There's your side view. Now we're gonna come back because the belly in this is much lighter. We're gonna get the jawbone here and then we're gonna transition that. And that's the beauty of not necessarily pulling every little bit out of the cup. So you can get those transitions really well when you put the next color in. I'm just gonna fade this down. And then just kind of lighten that up as we go. And then remember on the belly, we've, we've done black towards the bait, towards the head. And now we want to come down and do our white away towards the tail. And really what that's going to do is just keep that definition trend going. I'm going to press through this while this is on. I'm going to move up into the jawbone here and just get a little bit little bit into that head and then we're going to add some red that we would normally see and then some red in the gills and the gill plates. We've got a little bit of silver back in the cup. Just kind of tighten up a little bit around the eyes and on this cheek here. It has been trying to storm for about two hours now. So the next, and I guess you guys are probably wondering, and this is stuff that is, um, it's easily accessible for everybody. You can go to Hobby Lobby or find it at Amazon or online. I can leave a link in the description below for you guys. This is, while it's not the primary color shift stuff that I use anymore, this stuff is accessible to everybody. And it's, as far as basic shifters go, this isn't bad. So I think on a scale of one to 10, I'd probably give it a six. There's some stuff out there that's just absolutely amazing, but a girl's gotta have some secrets. But this stuff, not bad. So this is Vallejo the Shifters. I've used them in videos before. I probably haven't talked a whole lot about them, but uh, in the way of these things, not bad. So I'm just coming along with the, uh, this is a green, blue, violet. And then just kind of going down the body because you want it to have that kind of color shift metallic sheen that these things do have. Now you guys probably can't see that as well, but we're gonna show it to you from the sides. 
but it's really it's starting to take on some shape now uh, we're starting to get a little bit of variation in our shift you guys probably can't see that as well but we're going to show it to you from the sides but it's really it's starting to take on some shape now it's just a little bit of opaque violet super light color it should should do pretty well here and that's i'm just going to model that in to the top portion of this and then grab the same on the other side because we do two sides at once on this channel So I've got just a little bit of burn off from the last one left and we're coming down the home stretch on this pattern and I want to put in that medium line. I'm going to do that with just a little bit of pearl black on this kokanee. Just run that all the way back. Same thing on the other side. Just going to put my, my pinky on the helping hands to steady it and just lightly run in. Cool thing about the Hinkles is you have that very prominent lateral line to work with. So it's almost a reduced black that I've got in here. It was just a spray off without cleaner. Don't, if you have cleaner down, don't do that. But this was just a spray off. And then if you go off the Go off the rails a little bit and miss. You can always come back with just a, a clean, damp Q-tip and finish that up. And I did that here, so super easy to correct. I don't. I always try to keep Q-tips on hand, and that way the little mistake is as if it never happened. My pressure is very low. I'm gonna lay this on its side and then just come back and thicken this lateral line up a little bit, not much, just a little bit. I get a lot of comments from you guys saying, ah, I just, I don't have the steady hands. So you can, there's ways you can steady your hands. I just kind of move my whole arm it's like casting a fly rod. It's just uh, something you have to learn. And then run the same. Just to thicken that up a little bit. There we go. Now in laying this down, you can see that there's quite a bit of depth. You can see the darkness where I shot black first, but it doesn't portray like that in every single fin. So in some of this here and there, I'm just going to come back in with a paintbrush and pop a couple of these fin or, uh, scales, not fins, um, pop a couple of these scales white just to brighten it up a little bit and just just in various places you, you kind of want to ra randomize that I don't know if it's coffee not having enough or what but I am just struggle bussing today not so much on the pattern but definitely in the language so then I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I've got just a little, just a little spot, just a drop of white paint down here that I'm just going to use here and just work that in. Give it as much of a detailed look as possible. Just to kind of look like the scales might be coming up like it's been fighting or chasing or something that you would see on an older kokanee. And 
and then just run that all the way back and do pop one up here just a couple couple little spots and that's how I do it folks just give a very simple pattern a bit of a facelift on this beautiful heavy as hell Hinkle um, hard to get another H word um, but hella beautiful as well these Hinkles are amazing and they swim pretty well he's been around for a while so anytime we can spotlight somebody and help them shine in their craft I'm all about it yes I work for Bullshad but like I tell you guys all the time, it's community over competition. And that's just how I live. That is just how I live. I'm gonna do carbon copy on the other side. Obviously random scale, so starting here and moving my way back. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's not often that if ever. I don't think I've done a Hinkle before. I've had a few of them here and there over the years and I love them. I think they're beautiful. I think I, it's, it's hard, you guys. I know it's, they're very difficult to acquire. I know it takes a long time. I know that he, he makes them with love. But he's a small batch guy and when the demand is higher and someone's ability to make them that's where it can get a little frustrating as a customer but stick with it um, he's a good dude so many builders out there are really really good folks regardless of whether you've had a good experience with them or a bad experience few and far between do you find in this community somebody that just really wants to take you for a ride and not do their due diligence and that is my little soapbox minute. I'm telling you guys, I need coffee or something, some black rifle up in here. Um, of course, I've been getting up fairly early and checking the weather because the whole bullshed crew has been on this striper kick lately, myself included. But being a shore banger and a kayaker, it's a little bit harder for me to hunt down access without driving Mike crazy and say, put me in the boat, put me in the boat, because that's just not my style. Um, when rides are offered, heck yeah. But a lot of people ask Mike to go fishing and uh, just constant, he gets a constant barrage of emails and hey, let's do this and do that and collab and will you sponsor me? and it just it just goes on and on and on and it's difficult and when he is fishing it is one of the few times probably in an entire day month week where he gets moments of peace so keep that in mind not just with him with anybody any of these guys um let them come to you and that that goes to say with sponsorships and everything else out there um let them come to you. Prove your worth. Prove that you're good enough. And uh, let them ask you. And the reward, I promise you, is far greater than just begging. Well, there we've got it. We've got some scaling. We've got some color shift. We've got a beautiful silvery, shiny, kokanee. I am going to clear coat this and the reveal is going to come in the next video or update or socials. It's going to come somewhere. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a little bit about how I do things in the world. Doesn't mean I want you to rip me off either, but take that as inspiration and find where your niche is, whether it's this industry or a different industry. And I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.